Okay, so I know I'm throwing mixing cups around. I know I've been off for a few weeks, but been crazy busy with work and everything, going to the Ren Fair with my friends. And I've also been perfecting this recipe for you guys. I had no ideas. I didn't know what to do, kind of flip flopping around. So I decided to do, hey, let's look up and perfect a way you can do gobs in the microwave. Hey, what's better than gobs for a nice sweet treat? Okay, this is probably doesn't take that many ingredients, but it's the first time I've ever used a mixer <laughs> for you guys. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do the filling first, and just gonna start out with a big bowl. You're gonna fill up a stick of butter, get a spoon. Because you want this to be soft, so if you've left it set out a while, that's good. I'm gonna just throw it in my sink up. Or just pop it in, depending on how hard it is, uh, pop it in the microwave for 15 to 30 seconds. But you want to be able to mix this. Okay. Then you're going to get Crisco. Actually, before we put the Crisco in, why don't we, okay, I'm going to need that stick of butter later. You're going to want a cup, a whole cup of powdered sugar. There's one. And two. Okay. Now get your Crisco. It really doesn't matter the order you put them in. I just wanted to use the same cup, so I use my put my dry ingredient in first. And you're gonna want a half a cup of Crisco. Yeah, you're probably going to have to smush that down in your measuring cup. Make sure you get the right amount. Looks good. So now you'll flop that out into your mixing bowl. I am making a good start on making a mess for you guys today. <laughs> okay, so you'll just go ahead and set that aside. And... Now's when you get your mixer. I know, it's the first time I've ever had you guys use a mixer. And you're just mixing this up till it's nice and fluffy. There's no set time. Just... Scraping some off the side because we want all the ingredients. Okay, mine is nice and creamy, perfect buttercream. Mm. I'm actually going to be naughty. And put just a dash of vanilla in mine. If you think yours is good, leave it. Um, if you think you need to be a little sweeter, put another half a cup or something of powdered sugar in. I want it a little sweeter, so I'm going to put another half a cup of powdered sugar in. Yours might be to your taste, but this is what I'm going to do for mine. touching it and running it a little bit to get some of the cream off of my beaters. Well, 
That's our buttercream filling for the gobs. I'm gonna set it aside and I'm gonna show you how to make the gobs. Okay, get another mixing bowl. I'm gonna make vanilla gobs. Um, you can look up whatever cake recipe you want. You could use a box cake. You could use a from scratch recipe. I'm just making a tiny recipe that's just gonna make like six gobs with maybe one extra piece in case one falls apart or something. I like vanilla, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, what I'm gonna start with is half a cup of sugar. Half a cup of sugar. Okay, then I'm gonna use another stick of butter. Again, room temperature soft or Stick it in the microwave for just a little bit. I had this one in the microwave, to be honest. I think I put it in there a little long. This is a little melty, but uh, that's not a problem. You're just mixing it up anyway. Okay, there's my stick of butter. Now I'm gonna want half of a teaspoon of salt. As the fact that I was running out of counter space, I'll put that over there. Okay, half a teaspoon of salt. Oh, uh, what do we got next? A tablespoon of vanilla extract. I think vanilla extract is one of my favorite things. Alright, got our vanilla extract in there. Okay, what do we got next? Just an eighth of a teaspoon of almond extract. This is very strong stuff. You use a little extra vanilla extract, no problem. But the almond extract, you just want a very small dash of, just a half of a fourth, which is an eighth, because it's strong stuff. It's good, it brings out a great flavor in your cake, but it's very strong, so you definitely not want to be pouring over that. Okay, one large egg. And, oh, there it is. Almost lost my eggs. that in there. Okay. We're going to mix this up real quick. You can use a mixer for this or you can just use a fork if your butter's soft enough. Really doesn't matter for this one. I just think for the other one, you get a better result if you use the uh, mixer for your filling. I mean, if you use even a pre-box cake mix with this, you could use icing. Cream cheese even. Okay, once you've got that fairly well squished up, you're gonna go ahead and use a cup and a half of flour. There's one. Tend to set my bigger ingredients back there so I'm not clogging up my counter more than I already am. Okay. Try to stir it too fast, you're gonna just be sploshing it everywhere. You'll see it'll start to thicken up pretty quick. And you're gonna to wanna to stir it pretty good and try to get some of the lumpies out. Um, like I said, you can use the mixer here if you want, or you can use a fork. I'm just trying to show you either way to go about it. Okay, now that I have it semi-mixed up, I'm gonna use my mixer. If um if you guys are just using a fork. Just keep mixing it till it's smooth. This just makes it a little faster. Now your batter's gonna be fairly thick, but it is gonna be kind of floppy. 
So, okay. Now what you're going to want to do is move some of your ingredients to another counter. Because um, this is where we're going to start to put it in the microwave. I'm using four little white cereal balls. You're going to use two at a time. And you're going to get your Pam or your cooking spray, whatever brand you use. And you're going to liberally spray the bowls. When I say liberally, you can see I mean liberally. And take your measuring spoons, take your tablespoon, get a tablespoon, sort of, yeah, nice keeping tablespoon, and plop that right in the middle of the bowl. And try to get similar sized tablespoonfuls. And you don't need to shake it out or anything. You're going to take these and put them in the microwave for a minute. While you're doing that, get yourself some paper towels that you're going to fold in half and put them nicely here on your counter. Sorry you can't see that camera angles and everything, but this is what you're going to be dumping your gobs into afterwards. I'm going to take my mixer away. And as soon as this has been in a minute, we're going to check it to see if we need to do it another 30 seconds. But you do not want to do this for more than a minute and a half. Sorry, I'm just trying to get things a little cleaned up. Okay, now we're going to check on these. And they are done. See, I didn't make mine too terribly big because, you know, I mean, you can make them any size you want, but careful because they're going to be hot. Run a thin, going to run the spoon just a little bit. Around the outside, and you're gonna plop out a perfect little cake. Whoop. They're gonna be thin, but the batter's a little wet, so right now they're hot. So we're gonna let them set here. We've just made our two gob halves, and uh, while you let them set to get warm, you can either use the same bowls or you can let them cool a little bit, respray. I'm gonna let my original thing set a little bit. I'm gonna use a new set. Just put another tablespoonful in. And put it in for another minute. If it seems springy, then it's probably done. But like if your finger comes up wet when you test the batter, put it in for another 30 seconds. Okay, these um, will usually probably need to cool for a little bit because um, <laughs> you're going to take your little, see this is the half that was on the bottom and everything is the top of your gob and the part that would have been um, the top part in the bowl is technically the middle of your gob. So when they're dry, or well, dry, cool, you'll flip both halves over. And on one half, you'll put a spoonful of your filling, and you can put the other half on, and you can just crunch away. Well, they won't be crunchy, but you can munch away. These cool down a little bit. I'll show you how to make one. <laughs> but normally, you would um, let them set for a little bit to cool. But I want to show you guys how it's going. And um, my thing here will make a few gobs. But um, it's up to you however many you want to make. Uh, if you want to like double the recipe I did, go ahead. Okay, okay check my bobs here. Ooh, perfectly done. And it's trial and error. It really is. Just loosen it up a little bit. Now I'm going to flop it out. Steamy, steamy. Ooh. 
careful, careful. They are gonna be hot. <laughs> That's why you wanna have a paper towel there to absorb any extra moisture or heat. Give it a good shake. Now get the uh, original set you were working with and just keep going going until you've used up all your batter. The drier your batter is, the, um, I would say the denser, and maybe bigger your cake bits might get. And if you want to make a bigger gob, just put a bigger pile of batter in your bowl. And just keep on going until you're done. First time I made these, I made them way too big. But, um, what, like I said, once they're cool, you'll take one. And when you see the very flat part here, you'll take a spoonful of your filling, just like a heaping tablespoonful. You'll just plop it on there, spread it around a little bit, put the other half on there, and look, you've got a gob, a perfectly vanilla gob. Now, mine are still a little warm, so my icing's probably gonna melt a little bit, but. Oh my. That was really good. Still a little warm, so mine's a little squishy. But, oh yeah. And you got a dog that you made in the microwave in under, under 20 minutes because we're at like 16 some minutes now. I'm gonna finish baking mine and use the rest of my batter. You guys go try this. And remember, leave me your feedback. Please give me ideas of more stuff to do. And I'm so happy for you guys watching my videos. Oh, a little shout out. Uh, this shirt I got from a uh, grab bag from Shirt Punch. Star Wars. It's awesome. Anyway, I'll see you again.